Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm about this close to putting this thing on my insurance, setting it on fire, and claiming the money. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, um, I, had a, I, I put all the timing chains and all that together and, and made sure it was all in time and everything was good and uh, spun the engine over a couple of times with the timing cover and all that off of it, make sure that nothing's hitting, nothing's binding up, everything's good. Uh, get the timing cover back on, put the harmonic balancer on it and I said, you know what, I'm gonna give it another turn or two just to make sure everything's good. And then it bound up and I could hear something like crunching coming from behind the timing cover. So I decided to pull it all back apart. And uh, once again, it spun freely, no problems. But with the timing cover off and the harmonic balancer off, it, it, it did fine. So I did some scouring on the internet and what it is that I found was that when you put the harmonic balancer on, these two old, cam sprockets or these these timing chain sprockets so I just want to take this moment right here to show you this video that I'm explaining this is not video that I took this is video I found on YouTube um, explaining it exactly what it is that was going on and he can see the problem uh, as you point to the finger right there um, you can see his timing chains they're actually bound together that was that's what was happening with mine and he's gonna he's gonna start to back off the harmonic balancer because he put everything together without the timing cover on and it's showing that the two timing chains are touching each other now what it is i found is uh i think he has these sprockets installed incorrectly um he has it to where the shoulders of the timing gears are both forward i think you're supposed to have both of the shoulders facing each other I'm not 100% on that, but I did find on the internet a uh, one-piece sprocket design and I'm having a hell of a time trying to find a two-piece design. So I'm thinking that uh, they, they started making the one-piece design to kind of get rid of the issues that we're having with these two-piece to where they just kind of, I think over time they just kind of rub together and slowly but surely see right there. He backed out the harmonic balancer and it pulled that it pulled those chains apart it let go of the tension on those chains and here in a minute it'll start to spin freely but uh back to the one piece design sprocket i think it gives enough room in between the timing chains and doesn't throw them out of line with the uh sprockets on the camshafts and it makes everything just work so you can actually tighten down the harmonic balancer to specifications without having to worry about these chains hitting each other so to show you what it is exactly what it is I'm talking about, these are the sprockets that go on the crankshaft for the timing chains. And what I'm assuming has happened is over time from the factory, these have rubbed together ever so slightly and it's caused them to move even closer. So now there's a part on Rock Auto that actually pulls the sprockets apart just enough to keep to where the chains contact. So that way when I tighten down the harmonic balancer these won't smash together and it won't cause the chains to bind up so yeah but that is uh on its way they'll be here friday and today is currently saturday so i got time to do some other stuff with this thing and that other stuff involves changing out this speaker you may remember from one of the previous videos or one of the videos on instagram this speaker is just completely shot it's an aftermarket speaker and uh it's definitely seen some better days so this is trash and so i got these in here uh they're used but hey they were cheap and i'm gonna switch out this stereo because it's actually from like a 90s early 90s ford and i'm kind of scared what it is i'm gonna see back here Judging by the work that's been done on this truck previously, I may not like what I see. And yes, I, the, some of the parts I ordered were the window motor for this, so I've still got this all apart. And once that window motor comes in, we'll put that back in place. But I've still got the driver door panel in place. I haven't seen this speaker yet, so we'll see what that looks like. Another thing, while I've got this panel off, there's a dent right here 
but I'm hoping I can just reach my hand in there and just kind of push back out, hopefully. I haven't even gotten this door panel off yet, but I've gotten to the point where I can start to see what's going on. <laughs> Again, missing bolt here, missing bolt here. Well, maybe not a bolt, maybe more of those push pins, but I think the only bolt holding this door panel on is behind here. Onwards. Oh, and another piece I've ordered is this right here since it's missing the knob. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if the power mirrors work. I guess we'll find out. And of course, the bolt that was holding it in, it dropped and now I gotta find it. Where'd it go? It's a miracle. He's banished like a fart in the wind. Oh well, I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. Hey, this one's actually... I was about to say this one's not in bad shape, but apparently it is. <laughs> but now, I can try and get that dent out first. Yeah, that's not bad. Better than it was. Still not pretty. Yep. That would definitely take some minor persuasion to get those crinkles out because they're right here is the crease. And there's paint chipping off of there. And right here is the crease. But hey, it's better than it looked. And then we'll just get this new, better speaker in here. Well, <laughs> new to me. <laughs> All right. Hopefully the door panel goes back on. That's one thing I didn't check. Now I gotta find that missing bolt still. Shit. All right, I found that missing bolt. We can go ahead and put the door panel back on. I'm not going to put the switch panel back on yet because like I said, I'm going to replace this power mirror switch. And then just like that. Just like that. <sighs> Ta-da! Robert's your father's brother. Okay, moving on to the head unit. Like I said, it's a unit from a early 90s Ford. Uh, and um, it's just kind of sitting in here loosely. So that's why I'm a little concerned with what it is that I'm gonna find back here. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping the harness is intact and I'm gonna try and find a different spot for the camera while I'm doing all of this so you guys can see exactly what's going on. So give me a minute on that. Uh, you can see here, there's these four holes where you're supposed to put a tool in, pinch, and it'll pull out. Um, and I used to have those tools, but you know, over the years, moving halfway across the country and going from shop to shop to shop, those tools just kind of got lost. But uh, I'm not worried because this faceplate right here just kind of pops off and it should reveal exactly what it is I'm playing with here. Let's go ahead and, oh, I gotta unbolt that, huh? And, oh, yeah. Hey! Not bad, actually. I've still got the stock harness in here. That's great. Sweet. So, let's take this out. Take this out. Ta-da. And, uh, yeah, we'll go... We'll go grab the head unit that I've got, put it onto this piece, and then I'm going to look up the harness to figure out which ones of these do which. So I can wire in the stereo. I'd really like to keep these if I can. In fact, I might even look that up. Might even, might even get one of those on order and then we'll go from there. And there we are. We got the aftermarket unit in here. We'll get this cleaned up a little bit better. Uh, and I'm probably going to find a Kenwood to Ford uh, kit so that way I don't have to wire anything up and, and the next owner can easily swap this stereo out and not have to cut and splice wires and try and figure stuff out. 
because you know what? That's just the right thing to do. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it's, it's worth the effort really because I'm dealing with this problem on my son's Explore where people just cut the wires, cut the harnesses and just spliced everything in. And now I got to go down and track all the wires and figure where everything goes. And it's such a pain in the neck. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can find the kit for this. But first, I'm going to find out if this thing actually turns on. If it turns on, then I'm good to go. But yeah, that's, that's going to be it for today. I mean, I'm not trying to make this thing perfect by any means. Uh, I'm just trying to make it a decent, inexpensive truck that somebody can use to take to work, going out into the fields and haul hay with it or something, whatever, you know. I mean, and there's quite a few things I got to do, you know, still yet left over. Um, one of the things I want to do, the tailgate's green, um, so I'll probably spray paint that black just to kind of make it match. And I mean, the, the trim around the window still, I want to paint that up and, and the roof and the hood look like absolute crap. So we might even spray paint those and might even just redo the front surround here. This is actually supposed to be chrome to match the bumper. Um, and I've got a little something coming that might cover up that little dent there, make it look less noticeable, but will also help. And, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's coming along slowly but surely, but hey, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.